let's pray. Heavenly Father, the great I am, the creator of all things and the lover of our souls. We thank you because your love is so amazing. It's never ending and it's never changing. We thank you because we know that we can come before your throne boldly, boldly to make requests that aligns with your perfect will and glory. We thank you, Christ, for your sacrifice for us on the cross, displaying God's glory, giving us access to our potential stories. Heavenly Father, we ask that your perfect will be done. Let your kingdom come and be reigned by your Son. We open up this conference honoring you for all that you have begun, all you will begin, and all that's already done. We ask that you take control of the atmosphere now. Shower your anointing on every woman, man, watching one by one. We declare today and stand firm on your word that your plans and promises are certainly unstoppable. We ask that you direct our steps to all that is possible and forgive us of our transgressions in any way that we fail to honor this mission. We ask that you take full control as we listen to the woman of God that have called you forth to speak in this direction. And we ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And welcome to I Shine Women's 2020 Virtual Conference. And the theme is Unstoppable. <laughs> I'm one of your co hosts, Joyce Otua, and Maya Gray, we're just, hello, everyone out there. Hi, virtual event, we just love to have you. So before we get into it, Maya and I wanna chat a little bit with ourselves and with you all, but I want to talk about what it means to be unstoppable. Let's sit, yes, let's dig into yes, this. Yes, let's have a seat, Joyce. Okay. So, the verse for this conference is Job 42.2. And that, from the Good Word translation, means, I know that you, God, can do everything. Amen. And that your plans are unstoppable. Yes. And this is a time where Job was wrestling with God, and he finally just said, you know what? God of the universe, what can't you do? So if God's plans for us are unstoppable, that means that we are unstoppable. Yes, we are. So to me, the word unstoppable means limitless. Yes. And that I can do any and everything that I have been designed to do. What does that mean to you, Maya? You know what, Joyce? I had to actually look it up. You can cheat. That's okay. You know, I looked <laughs> up the word unstoppable, and I wanted to know exactly what the English definition was. Give it to us. It means impossible to stop or prevent. Amazing. Amazing. Just think about that. It is God is impossible to be stopped or prevented. Amen. So when I think about that, it's just thinking about that God's plan and his purpose for our lives. And, you know, it just never fails. Amen. Whatever God has in store is going to happen. Amen. And you know, nothing can get in the way of God. You know, when we think about what's happening today, you know, with this pandemic, mm -hmm. you know, we can get a little sad. You know, you don't, we don't know what the future looks like. Mm -hmm. Then you can start thinking about unstoppable faith. You know, when you become just thinking about you know, the challenges of just life, you know, you think about unstoppable prayer, 
So it's just so many things that God can do for you when you just align yourself with his plan Amen. that anything is, anything is possible for God. And do we believe that? Friends, do we believe that? Now we want to hear from you. It is a virtual conference. Yes. And we want to connect. Those of you that are on YouTube now, we want to see it in the comment section. One word for unstoppable. Also, if you look in the comment section, there'll be a link to a website called Polls Everywhere. And you can actually click on that link and give us one word for unstoppable. And we can see where people are saying, where they're tuning in from. Yes. So give us what you're saying. Unstoppable faith, I yes. see from yes. Shola. Yes. That's exactly what you were talking yes. about. Yes. You know what? Think about unstoppable love. Unstoppable prayer. <laughs> you know, think about unstoppable love. You know, God's love never stops. You know, you think about God's unstoppable word. God mm. word stands through all times. So it's so many things that you can think about when you think about God and how unstoppable he can be for but your life. Keep, yes, keep the comments coming. We want to connect with you as you all connect with each other. But Maya, let's tell the audience what they can expect tonight okay. from the conference. Okay, we have a wonderful conference plan. A huge lineup. And you know what? I'm just going to stop. I'm just going to stop because I want to just give a shout out. I want to give a shout out to City Lights. Yay! All the women. All, we, we did so much preparation, praying, planning, and I just wanted just to give a shout out to every I Shine women here at City yes, Lights. Yes. Yes, yes, I do want to do that. Okay, so let's go down to the agenda. So what do we have? Um, ready for you tonight. So first of all, we're going to do a vendor showcase. So we're going to be able to showcase um, plenty of women um, showing their entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. Oh God. Entrepreneurship. Yes. They are unstoppable. Yes. Yes. Okay. We're going to be able to show that. We're going to show what type of services and goods they have. We're going to have our very own city praise. Yay. Um, we're going to have our very own and I want to give a shout out to her, our very own first lady, Pastor Debo. Woo! She's going to kind of give us an introduction of the conference. And then we will have our, our very own speaker, Joe Saxton. Yes. Yes. And then after that, we actually have a guest artist named Megan Lee who will be singing a song for us today, one of her very own. We also have another unstoppable story from one of our youthful women, Angel. Amen. We have a question and answer time from Miss Jo Saxon, so she will be here to answer questions. Amen. A second vendor showcase, which means a second opportunity to support women, unstoppable, small businesses. Yes. We'll have a time to give back with our offering, and then we'll be back as the host to close you all out. Yes. Does that sound good? Yes. Are you guys excited? Yes. I yes. am so excited. Yes. We are so happy to be here. But we also have a few other announcements for you, some goodies that we want you guys to be mindful of and plugged into this entire conference. Let's talk about some things that we want them to do. Okay. So we do have some goodie bags. This, this is a virtual event. We do want our audience to be able to have something to be able to Small take away. Yeah. So uh, we have goodie bags on our website. And our website is ishinewoman.com. Okay. So we have three goodie things on our website. The first one is we have a digital journal. Yes. So with that digital journal, when you go onto the website, and I'm going to do it at the same time so I can be able to show everyone what we have on our goodie bags. So it's ishinewoman.com. And yes. for now, we're just going to tell you about the most important piece that we want you to be mindful of, which is the digital journal. Yeah. Yes. So if you go on the website, you'll be able to go to resources. Yes. And that will give you a downloadable journal. And in this journal, you can be intentional about your time in this conference. What are your expectations? What do you want to take away? What do you want to receive? Yes. What do you want to become? That downloadable journal is yours to keep and also yours to complete throughout the conference. Yes. What else do we want them to okay, do so social media wise? Yes. Okay. In another goodie bag, we also have a prayer link. 
So we know that prayer is required, needed, just everything, right? Right. Amen. So if you have any prayer requests, if you want to pray about anything, you go on to our iShineWomen.com website, you click on prayer, and you just fill it out, and I guarantee you we will pray over whatever you ask. Amen. We have one more goodie bag, one more thing in the goodie bag. We have connect. So this is the big goodie bag to me because this is one of my unstoppable stories. Um, connect is we have small groups. And that's just a fancy way of saying virtual communities. The conference doesn't end on Saturday. No. We want it to keep going throughout this year and into 2021. So it's an opportunity to look at the virtual communities that are within the City Light Church. You can log into the iShineWoman.com website, click connect, and you'll be able to see different communities that speak to you. There are communities for mothers, for women, for young women, for teens. Yes. All of these ways to make sure that the conversation doesn't end here. Yes, and we will be letting you know more about the goodie bag. So that's just an introduction. So we want you to be able to take those things away with you at the conference, at the end of the conference. So that's just an introduction. So we hope that those goodie bags will be good. So that's all that we have for you for right now, but we'll be back in a little bit. Now on to the next segment of our program. Again, welcome. We are so happy you are here. Thank you. Unbeatable ladies, unbreakable ladies, undeniable ladies. Amen. 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 Oh, Amen. Amen. I am so excited. I don't know about you, but I just feel like doing a hundred laps around the building. Let's do it. Yeah? <laughs> or maybe just jump. Woo! God is awesome. Why don't you just lift up your hands wherever you are right now. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise because he deserves all the glory, all the praise, all the adoration. God has been amazing. From the beginning of this conference, from the time that he sowed the seed, from the time when he began to put it in the hearts of different people from the time that he began to raise an army who will publish the word publish the vision god has been amazing and unstoppable i am dayboy jewala and this is my awesome husband unstoppable husband 
Uh, what's my name? Gregory Lyon Ejiwala. This is my unstoppable wife. <laughs> you know, and I'm just so honored to co-pastor this amazing, wonderful, energetic, purposeful, world-changing yes. family of people. Woo! The best bunch of people in this whole wide world. I tell you. I am, I am not biased. I'm just speaking the truth. In it's love. the truth. Amen. Yep. You know, there's so many things to say, but here we're just here to testify of the goodness of God. We're here to testify um, of how God has kept his word from the very beginning. Yeah, so we're talking about 2020. Mm -hmm. 2020 happened, and remember the discussion that we had? And I was like, you know, we're we actually going to have this conference yep. this year. Mm -hmm. You know, a virtual conference was something that people kind of warmed up to during the pandemic. But it's as one of, we it's know, one of the latest inventions. Yeah, as we know, it's not an easy thing, right? So there was that discussion. Will we have it? Mm -hmm. You know, and Pastor Lan, like he always is, Pastor Lan always declares the end from the beginning. He's like, you go for it and get it done. Yes. Because if God has spoken that word, he'll bring it to pass. Yes. And truly, that was all that I needed. God spoke the word. He confirmed it. And guess what? I took it to the planning team, and the planning team were like, yes, let's get it done. And, you know, the ladies of City Light, we all came together, fueled and energized by the grace of God. And here we are today. Yeah. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. You see, Hallelujah. the Shine Women's Conference is a vision that God sown in my heart somewhere around 2011, so about nine years ago, and he said, my need, I have a need, mm -hmm. I have a desire to see women who will not be limited by insecurities, who will not be limited by obstacles, yeah. who will not be limited by their busyness of life. How many of you know, we, we women, we are multitaskers. You guys are, you do, know, it, do it, guys do it, I don't know. In the, in the baby <laughs> factory, you know, I mean, Corona season was really very yes. interesting. We had Women a lot of are the, God is it show the babies. wonder of the world. I know, we yes. are. So. You know, tons of God show babies. So, you know, we women, we're always doing something, always doing something. And in the middle of life, when life happens, you know, I've, I've talked to many women over the course of time. It's so easy to get bogged down by the day-to-day -day grind, by, you know, just the day-to-day -day, um, hustles on hustles. It's so easy to be pulled into our world and just be engulfed in it. But then God said, I have a need. I have a desire. I want to see women rise up beyond all those obstacles and I want to see them become who they are in me fully, without limitations, without hindrance. And I want to see them become what I have called them to be on the earth. So how many of you know that you cannot be what you are not already are? Amen. That's powerful. You cannot be what you already are. I mean, it sounds like... What you are not already... What you are not already... You yeah, be. you can't. And the same way you cannot give... What has not been deposited within you? Let me, let, let me give an example yeah. just to illustrate that. A, a monkey, right, can only be a better monkey, can never be a human being. The yes. only reason why it can maximize the capacity of a monkey is because it's already a monkey. Exactly. But it can't be a human, right? Yeah. So in the same way, who we already are, yeah. that's what gives us the ability to become who we need to be. Hallelujah. That's powerful. Yes. And you know what? It's only when we go to the very source, right? Mm -hmm. That we begin to know who we are. Yes. It's only when we spend time in God's presence and when we immerse ourselves in God's word, yeah. in an atmosphere of the body of Christ, 
when we immerse ourselves into the kingdom, yeah. that that expression of who we are really becomes, you know, visible and expressible. Because yeah. God has not called us to live this journey or walk this journey by ourselves. Mm -hmm. But he's called us, first of all, to be tenders, cultivators of his presence. Yeah. And from that, we begin to express our fellowship and intimacy. We begin to express that. And, you know, funny enough, the, ex, um, the theme for our month here at the City the Life Church is the experience. Yeah. you got to have an experience. It all starts with an experience. Yeah. Um, and when you experience God, you step into that stage of being. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. And when you when you step into being, you begin to do yes. because that's when the overflow happens. Because your ministry is really an overflow of who you are, who you your are, being, of, of your, your relationship being. with yeah. God. Mm -hmm. So being and doing are the two facets of this vision. Mm -hmm. You know, we're really focused on stirring people up in their relationship with God. To be all they've been called to do. Yeah. To know who they are in Christ. Mm -hmm. To step into their identity. Yeah. Right? To be strong on the inside. Mm -hmm. And then with that, they begin to display and impact other people. Yes. Amen. Amen. And just make a difference in this world. Yeah. And truly, seeing I shine women all over the world. Amen. Yes. So yes. that is this vision that God has given and we're so honored that you could join us today, um, online, virtually, in your homes. I tell you, God has something unique. He has a unique word. One of the words that God gave me for this conference that, you know, we've all felt so much this year. We've lost a lot of things. We've, um, you know, there's been so much emotions. Listening to the media, listening to the news. There's been a lot of emotions. Things have been taken away. Things, you know, we felt depleted in so many ways. But God said, this will be a time of restoration. Amen. This will be a time of rejuvenation. Amen. This will be a time of reigniting. Amen. This will be a time of rekindling. Amen. This will be a time where there will be a jump start. It will be a milestone Amen. that you will mark in your calendar and say, Yes, I heard God on this this weekend. Yes, this is what he said. Yes, these are the ideas that he dropped in my heart. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And with all that, we're truly praying that you stepping out of this conference, you will finish 2020 strong mm -hmm. and going into 2021 unstoppable. Amen. Amen. Because according to Job 42, God can do everything, and yes. his plans are unstoppable. Yeah, unstoppable. I said everything, but sweetheart, I know you always have something to say. Uh, no, this time around, I actually don't have it. You already said yeah. everything. <laughs> you said everything. You have preached. No, you have I really preached didn't everything say, I could have preached. I really didn't say everything, but <laughs> I know you have something you know, to you say. You just preached it all. Yeah, say something. Well, <laughs> this conference, just this conference being, uh, everybody watching, is a testament to this theme, unstoppable. Yes. Because 2020 wanted to stop it. Yes. But the conference said, I'm unstoppable. When the planning started, so many things wanted to stop it. But the team and the women of City Light Church, yes. they said, no, you're not going to stop and us. Peter, get, guess what? I got a text that the mayor actually met, was it yesterday? Yes. And that after this weekend, yes. no events like this are holding. Can hold. Apart with from more services. than 10 people yes. outside of normal outside services. Outside of normal services. Can so, you believe that? It starts Just on the Monday. weekend of the conference. It's the, the curfew starts on Monday. Yeah. So the conference is already proving unstoppable. So it's a prophetic declaration of what God is going to release yes, into amen. your life. Everyone amen. joining us. Amen. You are going to enter into that realm. The anointing of God is coming upon you amen. to be unstoppable in your vision, in amen. your mission, amen. in your destiny, amen. in your purpose, in amen. your dreams. Amen. God's own impetus, God's own power and grace is coming upon yes. you through the fellowship that you know, we're going to be having this weekend. And the words that are going to be coming, the worship and all the different things you are going to be seeing uh, in this conference. 
uh, the conversations that will be going on online. Yes. God is releasing an unstoppable anointing upon you. Amen. And you can't be stopped. Whatsoever is born of God. Overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Unstoppable faith. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Enjoy the conference. Amen. Thank you. and 23 says because of the lord's great Lamentations 3 22 and 23 says because of the lord's great love we are not consumed for his compassions never fail they are new every morning great is your faithfulness over the past year i've seen god's faithfulness in my life what does it mean to be unstoppable to be unstoppable to me means to not be overcome by external circumstances. I am finding creative solutions to my concerns. Over the past year, I have had to develop the ability to have a healthy financial life. It wasn't easy. Upon graduating from college, I had $1,000 in credit card debt and was living paycheck to paycheck. I was miserable, anxious, and worried. I had no peace because my peace was found in external things rather than Christ himself. So upon moving to Michigan, I determined that I was going to make a change, a change for the better, a change for my family and a change for future generations. So what did I do? I first read a book called 48 days to the work you love. I revised my resume with the help of some great friends and I applied for and obtained a job that I love and that I'm so happy to be working at even today. It wasn't easy to eliminate that debt. It took time. It took persistence. It took me being able to have self-control and say no to those things I really wanted but didn't really need. It also took accountability. I'm so grateful for my husband who has been a good support and has been able to be that steady person to be like, no, you don't really need that extra thing right now. Is that in our budget, you know? Um, and I'm, I'm so grateful to God for bringing me through that season of what I thought was lack in order to really realize that God is my sufficiency. So currently, I am taking uh, Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University class and speaking with a financial advisor because I want to grow in how to be financially healthy and financially wise. I don't know it all, and I have so much to learn and so much that I'm learning each week through these classes. So moving forward, because I've been able to eliminate that debt, because I've placed my priorities in the right order, and because I'm wanting to be financially healthy, I've been able to start going to graduate school for social work. I'm so excited. Um, so I would just encourage you that whatever God puts in your heart, he's gonna give you the tools and the means necessary to accomplish it. But sometimes it will require discipline. It may require sacrifice and it may require, you know, the ability to put your needs in front of your wants. There's actually something that I failed to mention. I hope you guys forgive me. This is a virtual conference. Yes. We want you all on your social media. First of all, when can you ever pull out your phone during a conference? Have you ever um, been to conferences where that was permissible? Yes, just, you know, wait a minute. This is the selfie era, right? This is the year of the selfie. The this selfie is the year era. we're on lockdown. <laughs> we're all at home. Right now, we're giving you permission to pull out your phones and take a selfie with the hashtag IShine20. You want to take a selfie now? I think we should. <laughs> So okay. iShine 20 is a way that you can take a selfie yes. and post it to your social media platforms. Yes. Have you ever heard of a social wall? On this social wall that is also accessible on iShineWoman.com, you'll be able to see the entire virtual community hashtagging and selfieing yes. with you. But before we continue, 
Miss Maya Gray. Let's take a selfie. Let's take us a selfie. Let's take a selfie. Okay, one, two, three, say I shine. Okay. Y'all can't see it now, but it looks super cute. It looks the yes. way it looks right now yes. in person. <laughs> so we, we want them to take a selfie and post it on their um, social media. With the hashtag I shine 20. We also have another goodie. We have a virtual photo booth. Like we said, 2020 isn't stopping us. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Back in my day, which was like a year ago, uh -huh. photo booths were in person. Yes, and I just was. learned that we are able to do virtual photo booths, which means if you look in the comment section on YouTube, click the link for photo booths, mm -hmm. and it'll take you to the website where you can post your selfies. We have a cute little eyeshine woman frame. Yes, take your phone out, take a selfie. Yes. We have these awesome frames for you to engage the community. Again, this yes. is about building community, building relationships, yes. building fellowships, and making sure that we're able to connect. Amen. Does that sound good? That sounds good. So we have so much in store. We want to so hear much. from our um, our speaker, Joe Saxton, and we do want to remind you that this is a virtual conference. Mm -hmm. So we do want to hear you. We want you to um, post up your selfies, click on the link, use the photo booth. Wear your t-shirt, and if you don't have a t-shirt, just hold up a paper that says hashtag unstoppable or I shine 20. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm going to be checking social media to see if you posted, but for now, we're going to hear a word from our speaker, Ms. Joe, Joe Saxton. Saxton. Thank you. Joe Saxton is an author, international speaker, podcast host, and leadership coach. She has dedicated her career to growing leadership teams around the world and empowering women to find their purpose in their personal lives and in leadership. Born in London to parents who immigrated from Nigeria, Joe credits her family's unrelenting work ethic and the grace of God for the bold and tenacious approach she takes to sharing her wisdom on identity, influence, and living an authentic life. She's characterized by her ever present honesty and warm approachability, leaving audiences with practical next steps in areas that are usually a bit ambiguous. In her new book, Ready to Rise, On Your Voice, Gather Your Community, Step Into Your Influence, Jo tackles the real life issues women face, workplace harassment, sexism, low self-esteem, financial woes, power battles, and old wounds. She helps them to move beyond the disempowerment and together grow their grit. While providing meaningful wisdom from her own journey to leadership, Joe also adds stories of empowered women from the Bible. Readers will be empowered to change their landscape and build new communities where diverse female leadership can flourish. Join me in welcoming to the I Shine Women's Conference 2020, Joe Saxton. Hi everybody, I'm Jo Saxton and it's a real privilege to be with you. I'm so sorry that we can't be together in person. I'd have loved to have done this face to face, but I am so glad that in this way, even if it's a strange way, that we get to unpack the word of God together. I am not from around here. I am a Brit. I grew up in London in England. My family are Nigerian. I've got two teenage girls, husband called Chris, and we live in the Minneapolis area. Um, I am struck by your theme, Unstoppable, drawn from Job chapter 42, verse 2, where it says here, I know that you can do everything and that your plans are unstoppable because it feels like this year everything has been forced to a stop. It feels that this year, um, if ever there was a verse that was tested, this was it. So what I want to do together is go through one of the chapters of the Gospels. It will actually be Matthew chapter 14, where we see Jesus and his disciples on a journey where there are interruptions again and again and again and again. We're going to focus on one particular interruption, but the goal of us looking at these words together is to say, what tools can we get from the gospel showing us in these times when life is forcing itself on us, when situations are putting us under pressure, God, by his power, his grace and, um, and his mercy will help us keep moving forward. Because I believe that even in these uncertain, ever-changing, pressurized times, God will work his purpose out for us. God has not forgotten us. God continues to see us. God is still moving. God is still moving in yours and my life. And we just want to get in on what he's doing and be where he is. But before I even get to that, I'd like to share a story. A couple of years ago, I went to see my mum 
who lives in London still, and we were taking her out for her birthday. We'd been in England for work and we just had a short bit of time together. I wanted to take her to her favorite restaurant, her favorite Chinese restaurant, which was in our neighborhood. So as we, as we drove into the neighborhood, I remember saying to my husband, don't worry about the GPS. I know exactly where we're going. This won't be a problem. Except that as I drove on the street, everything had changed. Where there used to be a grocery store, there was now an embassy. Where there used to be a store I was familiar with, it was another thing entirely. We drove around the neighborhood and I pointed my husband to places that we could go, but the roads had been blocked or weren't roads anymore, or they would fine you for being there for two minutes. Nothing made sense. In the end, and it was the very end, we arrived at the restaurant late late because nothing was familiar. And I remember complaining to my mum saying, what's wrong with this place? Everything has changed. And she said to me, Joe, it's been changing for years. You just weren't watching. You weren't paying attention. That thought has come back to me a lot when I reflect on what this year has been like, where familiar things have been forced to be different. Things that we're used to have been brought to a stop. Things that we hoped um, would natural expectations, just like a taking a familiar journey. Uh, around streets that we grew up on isn't the same anymore. And yet I believe that even in this ever-changing landscape, I'm not sure that I'm gonna call it a new normal yet because it doesn't seem like we've arrived, but as we look and engage with this emerging landscape, I believe God has something for us. How do we walk with him when we want to stop, when it feels like all we should do is stop? Let me turn with you um, to Matthew chapter 14. There are three particular stories there. The first one is of the death of John the Baptist. Um, John has been faithful from childhood serving God. He has, he has been the catalyst for an incredible revival in their community where people are gathering from all around into the desert because they recognize that God is on this man and something needs to change. He has a mission and a ministry to introduce and prepare the way for Jesus. And yet suddenly, because of the um, corruption within the rulers, he, his life is just unjustly taken from him. Does Jesus stop now? Do the disciples stop now? Are the purposes of God over now? Well, what we see happens is at that point, Jesus retreats um, and he retreats to pray. He pulls away, the disciples pull away. And in many ways, when we look at this year, um, we may find that circumstances have interrupted us. We may be wrestling with shock and grief and loss of proportions that we couldn't have deemed imaginable. And I hope that even this time we spend together is a chance for us to pull away and retreat and allow the Lord to minister to us for the loss of jobs, for the loss of loved ones, for the loss of a way of life, for the loss of our freedoms and independence, for the loss, the, the losses that we felt were coming, but we didn't know how to handle. May we take the example of Jesus and pull away to be with the father that he would meet with us there. But the purposes of what Jesus is doing, because he's there on earth to share good news. He's there on earth to seek and save the lost. The purposes will still go forward, even in the face of this devastating circumstance. And so Jesus comes and, and lands at a place and thousands of people are around him. They are around him because they're desperate. They'll, want, they'll do anything to be near him. And they stay with him all day. Jesus sees that these people are helpless and harassed, overwhelmed. Sheep without a shepherd is often a phrase we see in the Gospels describing the people. The disciples, and let's remember, some of those disciples had missed um, John too because they had followed John first. The disciples are like, Jesus, can you get rid of these people? That we, we can't feed them all. And in that moment, Jesus tells them, well, you go find them something to eat. Can you imagine the overwhelm? that maybe this is the end of the road. This is the end of the road. And all they have is five um, loaves and two fish. And Jesus says, bring it to me, bring it to me. And he transforms it. So that may be part of our, our journey where we see the purposes of God unfold. Maybe you're overwhelmed. And it feels silly to say maybe you're overwhelmed because we know we've all been overwhelmed by these circumstances. And maybe you feel you just have five loaves and two fish in your hands to pay your bills. Five loaves and two fish in your hands to work out how to educate your kids, take care of family, check on extended family back home, make sure things get done, hold on to your job. And I believe that Jesus is saying to each and every one of us, bring it all to me. 
Like he says in Matthew 14, verse 18, bring it here. Bring the little that you have where you feel like you're at the end of the road and that at this point you can do no more, where you feel at this point there's nothing left for you. Let's, let's see how Jesus can transform that, transform your circumstances, transform your situations. And so I ask you, what do you need to bring to the Lord where you think, God, it's done? But God says, my purposes aren't finished yet. And so Jesus takes this place of desperation and longing and hunger and he makes it a place of abundance. And I believe that's his promise for you and I. But the story I wanted to really hone in on, and it felt inappropriate to not even mention the rest of the chapter, which is why I started there. The story I want to hone in on is a familiar one to us, and I'm going to read it to you. It's from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 23. So we know John the Baptist has been murdered. We know that Jesus has fed 5,000 families. And then here's what happens next. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into that boat and cross over to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Before I even go a second further, you see this rhythm of prayer in the midst of all of this pressure that Jesus is doing there. He keeps on pulling away to be with the Father. And I think for you and I, as we think of our journey, that's going to be a key thing. Moving on. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from the land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I'm here. Peter then called out to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over to the other side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith. Jesus said, why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. Now Lake Galilee, the lake that they're on, was known for its storms. They were often sudden and fierce and they were absolutely chaotic, terrifying. Theologian N.T. Wright often notes that with the exception of fishermen, And the disciples, we know a few of the disciples were fishermen, with the exception of the fishermen, that the Jews were not seafaring people. These were the people of the land. And even in their cultural and spiritual heritage, the waters came to symbolize something chaotic, um, threatening God's creation, threatening God's people. In books like Daniel, the sea is where the monsters come from. But right now, they're just trying to get across a lake. They're going to a new place. God's got them on a journey, which is challenging. This whole chapter has been challenging, but they have no idea about what's to come. And they have no idea that um, that even this moment can't stop what God has planned for them. In John's account of this story in John chapter six, it says that the disciples are fighting this storm for three or four miles. Can you imagine the wind and the waves crashing into your boat? You being terrified for your life, noticing that even the fishermen who are used to this stuff are terrified. And just when they think it doesn't, it couldn't get any worse, they see a figure on the water and they don't know it's Jesus and they think it's a ghost. Now they think it's really over. They've had pressure. They've, they've had loss. They've encountered loss and mourning. They've encountered overwhelming pressure in their everyday ministry. And now they're wondering whether they're facing the end of their very lives. And Jesus is doing something there. Jesus is confidently walking towards them. Jesus didn't cause the storm, but he's in it. But the dilemma for them is that he's really hard to recognize. And I think that's often true in our challenging circumstances, right? That sometimes God is moving and God is doing something and all we can see is what's immediately in front of us and we can't see that God is on the move in that situation just as Jesus was on the move in the midst of the storm. I want to ask you, what heavy waves are you um, fighting? Maybe you feel like you've been fighting... um, 
and struggling for, for miles now in the same way the disciples were, were struggling throughout the night thinking that this was the end. Maybe for you it's been mile after mile after mile of devastating circumstances, challenging circumstances where there seemed to be no way. Can you see Jesus in your storm? And if you did, and if, if, would you actually recognize him? Would you be able to tell that he was there? Jesus says this to the disciples. He says, take courage. He says, don't be afraid. Take courage. I'm here in verse 27. And I'm fascinated by it. In the midst of all the storm, Jesus reminds them, I'm here. I'm here. I'm the one. The one who fed thousands with you just before. The one who works miracles, who teaches with authority. The one who was with you in the loss of John the Baptist. That Jesus, the one who you've been following. You may not recognize me right now, but I'm right here with you. And I haven't changed. In the middle of your storm, when you feel like everything is coming to an end, what's your story with Jesus? When you think that everything is about to stop, the reason why Job, remember Job from the beginning, the reason why Job in, um, was able to hold on is because he had a story with God. He had a story so that when the story went sour, he still knew that the God of the early days would be the God with him in the, in the tough days. And what Jesus is encouraging the disciples here is to remember, to, to draw their courage, not from their own personal strength, not from their bravado, but because he is with them in the storm. The one who heals, the one who works miracles, the one who provides, the one who was taught. And so I invite each and every one of us in this moment, in our storm, where it feels like we are going to be capsized, where we're overwhelmed and we feel like all hope is gone and everything is stopped. What's your story with Jesus? What's your story with him in this moment? Remind yourself, remind one another, remind one another of the God who got you through those devastating times. Remind yourselves of the God who moved in your life when your family was falling apart. Remind yourself of the God who was in your life when all hope was gone. Remind yourself of the God who was with you in tragedy and devastation. Remind yourself that the God who was in your past storms is a God who's in your present storms and is a God who will lead you through future storms. That's who's with you in this storm. Because it will give you courage not just for the present, but into the future. Let's keep going. Then Peter called to him and said, Lord, if it's really you, then tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong winds and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. I'm fascinated that here Peter wants something more than survival. He wants to be where Jesus is. He wants to be where, close to what Jesus is doing. And what I'm fascinated by is that this man who he's clearly seen enough of Jesus to take a step, to take a step in the storm. And he's not pretending that the storm has suddenly disappeared. And let's not let's remember that the storm that we see here is not some kind of pretty picture with a few bouncing waves. This is chaos. This is disaster. This is death, unless there's a miracle. The storm didn't um, calm down for Peter, but what happens is he steps out in relation to Jesus' words to him. Come, yes, come, says Jesus in verse 29. Peter walks through the storm on the word that Jesus told him. A word that didn't make any sense, but a word that transformed everything, that transforms the winds and the waves and their power and, and enables this man to walk through. And that's the reality of the situation here. That's the reality. It's transformed by the presence of God. And yet it's interesting to note that without it, without him relying on and keeping his focus on Jesus, that he's unable to keep moving forward. And so ultimately he's freaked out and, he, um, and Jesus has to rescue him. But let's, before we think of what Peter didn't do, let's think of what he did do for a second. He walks on the words of Jesus through the storm and it takes him somewhere completely new. And so I ask you, what are the words that Jesus is saying to you right now? What's the word to you in this storm? The reason why we can walk through, why we keep moving when everything else is stopped is not our bravado. It's the word that Jesus has given us. What's God's word to your circumstances? What's God's word to you and your family, to you about your work, to you about yourself, to you about your future? And what's he wanting you to do about what he's saying to you? 
And are you stepping out on it? Or are you waiting for the wind and the waves to just behave first? Are you waiting for the circumstances to look right? And yet when we look at the Bible and we look at people of faith, whether it's Job, whether it's Esther, whether it's Daniel, whoever it is, they are stepping out on what God said to them, even though the circumstances are disastrous. They discover that God is unstoppable. They discover that God's purposes are unstoppable, not because everything moves smoothly, but because in the face of challenge, God comes and God moves in powerful ways. And so I want to ask you to consider a couple of things. I want to ask you to reflect on just a couple of things. What's God's word to you right now? And maybe like Peter, you heard a word, but you ran out of steam a little bit. Maybe you had a word for this year. You began 2020 with high hopes and clear vision. And then the pandemic struck and set fire to your vision board. Um, you had a sense of hope and then you watched images on TV of uh, people's lives being taken. And you wondered where your hope was. You saw a racial reckoning, you encountered, you lived within your very body, a racial reckoning and the uprisings and, then you, and you're like, God, how, have we come far at all? What's the word that you have held on to, but you are struggling? And you're wondering if that word's run out. And I want to encourage you to press in for what Jesus' word is to you right now. What happens next is this. In, in verse 31, Jesus immediately reaches out and grabs him. You have so little faith. And the sense of that in um, the translations is almost like you've run out. It's like you, you've run dry of your faith. Jesus said, why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Did you notice that he had to keep on walking back? This time he's clinging to Jesus. When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. You ran out of steam. Maybe you didn't know Jesus had got you. But what I love about this is in the midst of the storm, even if it feels like all is gone and, and, and peace is like it's over, Jesus reaches out and grabs him. Jesus pulls him up. And now Peter walks back clinging to Jesus, more dependent, but now they walk back into the boat together. And I love the fact that when Jesus gets in the boat with the disciples, everything stops. For some of us, maybe we are able to step out and see God do amazing things. But what we see is the grace of God coming into our boat right now and transforming our circumstances still. Maybe you've hit something of a wall and you can't hang on and you can't keep doing this for yourself. And yet here he is meeting you. You know, this moment matters. The moment we're in matters because Jesus is offering you more than emergency care. He is moving things out of your way so you can keep going. You see, the disciples were on a journey. They were on a journey to get to the other side of the lake. And when they got there, God was doing amazing things. He was bringing healing and deliverance and freedom and the message of the gospel was going out. But there was battle and there was struggle and there was um, difficulty and grief and loss all along the way. Would they give up or would they walk on what God was calling them to? We have no control over the circumstances we're in. I think this year has taught us that in all kinds of fresh ways. But this thing is true. God's hold on you is stronger than your hold on him and he has no intention of letting you go. So when you feel that your purpose is and, your, and God's purpose for you um, is overwhelming, Take courage. Take courage in these words. And let me, uh, let me scan back the entire chapter with you. In the grief and loss, pull away to be with him and let him comfort you. When you feel like there are all those demands um, hone, um, falling all over you and all you've got is the equivalent of five loaves and two fish and it feels inadequate, bring them to Jesus and let him transform them. And if you're in the storm, what's his word to you? Walk on his words to you. And may we be able, like Job, to be able to say this. I know you can do everything and that your plans are unstoppable. Why? Because we've walked with God through it. Why? Because we've seen Jesus in it. Why? Because Jesus has led us through the storm, through the struggle, through the suffering to a place of breakthrough. Let's pray together. Father God, I do want to thank you for every one of these women. And Lord, I thank you that you see their lives and you know their story. And Lord, I ask that you would meet them in their storm. You would meet them in their struggle. You would meet them in their suffering. Lord, I pray that you would bring a great deliverance and that they would be reminded in practical, tangible ways 
Lord, that you can still do all things and that you are faithful and true and that your purposes for their life remain unstoppable. We ask this in your name for your glory. Amen. Yes. Powerful word. Such a powerful word. Maya, Such could a... you tell the audience what your takeaways were? You know what? If I want to just sum it up, my takeaway was just to bring it to Jesus. Amen. You know, when we're in a, a time that is uncertain, you know, when you take it to the source and you, you know, you entrench yourself in the word, Amen. you can begin to walk on the water. Amen. You know, you begin to go to Jesus. So Amen. it was so many good takeaways. I appreciate the word, but my, my thing is, is take it to Jesus. Amen. Amen. I love that takeaway. And another thing that I was really moved by, by the speaker is that they never said that there weren't going to be storms. Mm -hmm. No one is denying that 2020 hasn't been difficult, right? Yes. No one is denying that there hasn't been chaos and trauma and death and pain. Mm -hmm. But what we are saying is that in God, we are unstoppable. Amen. That even Amen. though the storms rage and the winds blow and we have our five loaves and our two little fish, yes. In him, we are unstoppable. Yes, we are. So if you cling to the Father, you don't have to do it in your strength. On your own, you can be stopped. Yes, you can. But thank God that we're not on our own. Amen. So like you said, take it to Jesus. Take it to Remind Jesus. Remind yourself of who you are in Christ. Yes. And no matter the storm of this year, you will be unstoppable. Yes. Believe it. And that's the only way that you can receive it in yes. faith. Amen. But what's Amen. also wonderful that it is even though Miss Jo Saxon isn't with us in person, she is still available for our question and answer section in the comment section. Drop your questions and answers. And there's also a phone number that you can text. So get ready. 312-970-1662. That is 312-970-1662. Text your questions that you would hope that Ms. Saxon could answer for you. Think about them and let's connect with her because I know that there's more that we can dig into. Yes. With that being said, be thinking about your questions, but I want to call up to the stage right now a woman I've come to love and adore, Miss yes. Megan Lee, as she sings a song. Thank you, Amen. Megan. Hey, guys. This song is called Not Today, and it is performed originally by Hillsong. <laughs> Yeah. 
My unstoppable story took place many years ago when I was younger and in school, but it made me who I am today. When I was younger, I used to get bullied because of how dark my skin was, how deep my voice was, or even how big my hands were. And it really made me question who I really was. I thought I had to seek validation. But after talking to my mother and her going up to the school and confronting the bully and also talking to those around me and even just connecting with God a lot more, I was able to understand my identity, understand who I am in Christ and what is important to me. Even at this time of point of life, I don't question who I am. I don't, what's it called, dislike myself. I actually love who I am fully. And I'm so grateful for that because there's not many people who are able to like love themselves fully. And that's why I'm very big on self-love and just being on, just being me. So for me, being unstoppable is just being able to realize your identity because your identity is what makes you who you are in Christ. Also just makes you who you are. And it's important that you know that that relationship between you and God is important because even though God may put people in your life to be able to like build you up, there's also sometimes where you may not <laughs> seem to like those people, but they're there for a reason. And even with that, I've just been able to learn that it's important to appreciate everything that God has given me and that just being unstoppable, just being able to know who you are and not questioning your worth. And even when there are times where I'm like, oh, am I, am I okay? Is it, am I really, do I really love myself? Which is very rarely, I'm able to tell myself, I love me some me, or even just go back to the Bible. So for you, if any of you guys want to be unstoppable, or if you are trying to pursue that um, unstoppableness, tell yourself you love you some you, because you should, because you are important to you and you are important to God. It is a pleasure, it is an honor to have Joe Saxton here with us. The first time I heard Joe Saxton speak was at the GLS conference um, in 2019, and it just blew me away. You know, when I saw her on stage, I was like, wow, how can someone just sound so perfect on stage? Oh, thank you. You know, her words were so articulate, the way she communicated, carried the audience. And it wasn't just in skills. There was such a powerful anointing mm. and wisdom thank that you. came with her word. Thank you. And I was just like, I have to follow this woman. <laughs> And then, you know, I think I had been connected with her in one way or another on social media because I follow her on social media. And then this pandemic happened. And I'm like, I really need to find a way of building up myself because I, you know, pour out to people. Mm -hmm. I have to have a way of um, pouring, someone pouring out to me. So somehow an email just came to my inbox. <laughs> I was from Joe Saxton Leadership Network. I'm like, hmm, there was like a 30 day free trial. I'm like, let me check this out and oh, see so cool. what, you know, how this works. And that's how I went in there and it beat my, it was beyond my expectation. Oh, it was so, so loaded with, with wisdom. It was so loaded with practical things. Mm. Um, most importantly, I found a network of women that yeah. I could connect with. Yeah. Women leaders literally from all over the world yeah. you know, in this coaching network. And then, you know, to put the icing on the cake, you know, Jo uh, meets with us every Tuesday. She brings world-class leaders from all over the world and they share, you know, things that you pay thousands of dollars to go to in conferences. And then, you know, somewhere in between the pandemic, I had a question. Um, I reached out to Joe. I sent her an email. And the very next day, Joe sent me a very detailed response. I almost, like, cried because I'm like, how can someone with such a busy schedule take so much time and answer my question in detail? She gave me websites. She, you know, pointed me and gave me direction and all that. I'm like, okay, this is someone... I want to be connected with. And it was a no-brainer, you know, <laughs> when we're going to think about speakers for the iShine conference. I'm like, yes, we got to have Joe Saxton come speak to us. Oh, thank you. Joe so Saxton definitely is an unstoppable woman. She has, um, you know, a history of where she's come from.
from. So she didn't just end up on this large platform. She's had her own area of struggles as a woman. And that's something that I am so thankful for about her. She's very vulnerable. She tells you how, you know, how she got to where she is. And she even still shares her struggles because we're, we've all not arrived. And she's so, so relatable. So I am so excited. And I'm looking forward to the nuggets she's going to share. That was such a powerful one, Joe. Thank that you. Was so it was effective. It was on point, And it was just so loaded. You know, I've listened to it so many, many times. And every time I listen to it, um, you know, I get so many nuggets. But what are the practical ways where we can pull away um, into God's presence? Okay. Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Now mm -hmm. I can hear you. Yay. This is good. Okay, great. Um, first of all, thank you for having me. It's been such an honor to join you. It's been, it is a treat. and the little piece that I managed to join in on was wonderful. It was glorious. Um, I do think this is one of the battles for our time to, to carve some time away. Um, so first of all, I would remind us is it's something that we will have to fight a little bit for that we'll have to work towards. Um, if you, and so what, what I find, I'm a, I'm a morning person. I don't know that that's especially spiritual. I just don't sleep that much. So for me, um, that first part of the day is a steal away time. Um, but, but I like to have check-in points in the day. And I, whether it's standing outside for five minutes, whether that's a few seconds here and there and just inviting God to walk with me, those things have been really helpful too. I also find it helpful to have someone I like, I have a friend who I, who I do a conference call with three times a week, um, just a short time to pray together and having one other person often can help ignite when I'm particularly dry. Um, so that, that would be another piece I'd recommend uh, for us to do. But I, I, I think, I, I think some, for some of us, we know right now it doesn't feel realistic to, we don't have half an hour and we'll spend all that time feeling guilty about half that half, not having half an hour when actually maybe when you um, to take five minutes, that's meaningful will actually be more than the 30 minutes of guilt that you may feel. Um, so I would, if you're walk, if you get to get outside, um, invite the Lord with you. If you, that moment before you go to sleep, I'm not good at spending time with the Lord before I sleep. That is like an invitation to nap. So, so that, but if you're a nighttime person, that might be a moment. When my children were very young, I just locked myself in the bathroom and let them sit outside um, because I was healthier. <laughs> I, they, they were just the kind of background noise. Um, but, but there are some prayers I just pray through, like, where, like I might, as I start the day, I might be, Lord, come by your spirit and just invite him, invite him, invite him. And I invite him in the, in the difficulty of finding him as well. Wow. So basically, just bear yourself out to God. You know, there's no need to pull on any covers. God already sees who you are. Exactly. And make sure God is in everything you're doing. Like, carry yeah. God along with you. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Because it is a relationship. And sometimes with our relationships, we're able, um, we're able to carve out lots of time. And other times we're not. And, and I would... I want lots of time, and that, but it ebbs and flows. And particularly in this moment when everything that's been normal to us has yeah. been dismantled. Uh -huh. So it's okay that if, you, if you're like, the way I used to do it wasn't working. And so rather than weeping over a world that no longer exists, I start looking at the world I'm in and say, okay, what works right now? What, and I, in this moment, I'm finding some small segments during the day has helped significantly. Um, like I pick a book to a book of the Bible to read and just read a chapter and then go about my business. I have a, my kind of playlist on YouTube of worship songs that I listen to and I'll play them in the background. Just li little things have helped and ha they've kind of watered the ground of my faith. But I think one of the key things is raw honesty as well. Raw honesty. Raw honesty. Because I think, God already knows who you are, right? Yeah, and because you could spend hours trying to go through the motions, reading the right things, praying the right prayers, but your heart not be there. So, uh, so in this moment, when we're under such pressures, when we're feeling such demands, when we feel, if we're honest, too busy for time with God, that honesty is actually still seeds into that relationship and will yield a harvest as well. 
love that. Just being vulnerable because before God, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm reminded of that scripture that says, you know, and when when we are weak, in, He is strong. That's mm -hmm. you know, Paul said, I'd rather boast in my infirmities so yeah. that Christ's power may rest upon me. Mm -hmm. That's that's amazing. Thanks for sharing that. So you know, just a little incident here. How do you focus on Jesus in the middle of the storm? Mm -hmm. So you know. Your message was all about focusing on Jesus, right? Peter, yeah. as long as Peter focused on Jesus, he was yeah. unstoppable. He was able to walk on that word that Jesus gave. Mm -hmm. But in our day-to-day -day struggles or in our day-to-day -day walk, as we walk this journey out, as we walk it out, and even looking back this year, it's been so hard, yeah. I tell you, to focus yeah. on Jesus. You know, everywhere you turn to, it's it's bad news. The media, mm. um, just so many things going on. How do you fight for that focus? What are some practical things that you do? Yeah, you know? yeah. No, that. Thank you. Um, I I mean that that passage from the Bible that I shared with you has been. I've kind of been in that scripture in in that chapter for a, since March, because that was the first thing. But I remember saying, God, what do I do now? What do I do? What do I do now? And that was the chapter that has come to me. So the practical things that have helped me focus have been has been asking God, what's your word? Is there a verse from the Bible that I just keep on coming back to? So right now for the last uh, for the last kind of 90 days of the year, it is Matthew 6, I think 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Everything else will be added. Now I'm reading other things, but when I get distracted and it's a when, not an if for me. <laughs> I'm always distracted by something. I come back to that an that anchor verse and say, how am I walking on that verse today? How am I living into that verse today? How am I, what does seeking first the kingdom mean for how I'm parenting right now, for my marriage right now, for my work? Am I asking God, hey, what does it look like for you to rule in this situation? Hmm. So I, that verse is some, I, I literally carry that word with me as, as to, because I lose my, I'm not one who focuses very well. I'm like, I'm a, like a butterfly. I'm here. I'm there. I'm doing this. I'm doing, <laughs> I'm excited. It's Instagram. And then I'm hungry and I need a snack. And then I need it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? All of these things. So I, I need anchors like that. That helps me focus. Then I think the other question is how can I serve? For me, I, and it's probably because I'm an extrovert and because we've been a lot more isolated, I need a kind of back and forth with God. I need a question. To, so I need a word to walk on that gives me focus. I need I need things that will bring me into focus. You know, like when you have um, binoculars, you need to adjust to get the focus. And so for me, questions help me focus. So um, I, some of the questions I've been asking over the last few months have been, "What, Lord, how can I serve you today? What does it look like to serve in my neighborhood? What does it look like to serve my family? Um, sometimes if I've needed to ask questions of my own life, I might ask, um, how am I doing spiritually, physically, and emotionally? And the questions draw out the things that the busyness has buried um, at the bottom. Um, so that's helped me, that's helped me focus. Um, honestly, other disciplines in the midst of the storm, Thanksgiving has helped me focus. Thankfulness has been, I mean, Thankfulness is a weapon. Um, gratitude, uh, that cultivating, it's like it, it's like the storm is overcoming and it's the pushback. The, the thanks, so it's what am I thankful for? And I will walk in that and, and I'll say those things, little things to big things. Um, and, you know, it may be, I'm thankful for my shoes, although I haven't worn shoes recently because I'm in my house. I'm thankful for my food. I'm thankful for, but it, again, it, it, you, you're exercising and exercising. And then some practical things like deep breaths have helped me. Uh, <laughs> taking long, deep breaths and just, and saying, God, it's all yours. I'm breathing out all the mess I can't handle. I'm breathing in the fact that you are with me and you'll never leave me or forsake me. Those sorts of things have helped, have helped be focused and 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 then sometimes just stopping you know um i don't know how many of us here are nigerians but um nigerians know how to move we're not as great as st at stopping do you know what i mean um we, uh, we are i didn't grow up with vacations i didn't grow up you know if we're immigrant families we we don't grow up with vacations we don't grow up with rest um unless it's a party that's taken five hours to happen and then you're cooking anyway 
and then you're partying and then you're doing all, we we just move and move and move and move and check on this person and check on that person so stopping is an act of resistance to the go 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 and is a moment and sometimes that helps me focus because sometimes that busyness is burying things that i'm afraid of wow wow those are all like powerful loaded <laughs> nuggets you know embedded in everything you've said um i want to dig a little bit mm. into your journey as an unstoppable woman i see you as an unstoppable woman but I know that you have had your fair share mm. of, of struggles, of yeah. things you had to, you know, stand up for as a woman. Yeah. You know, in the middle of, you know, a company of men, or, you know, um, maybe when the perspective is, you know, she shouldn't be here. Yeah. You know, what what is that kind of mindset that you need to have as an unstoppable woman, and what kind of mindset have you cultivated? over the years yeah you know, maybe you have like some guiding principles that you can share with us yeah tonight. no it's been it's been crucial because i've seen the opposite in my life when i have walked into a room and felt i needed to please please people when i needed to prove myself when i tried to become someone else to fit in it's never gone well it's never gone well and it's burnt me out it's exhausted me it's been oppressive um i think there have been a couple of things i've needed to know whose i was as well as who i was because when you know whose you are, then you have nothing to prove and nothing to defend because you're already loved. You're already loved. And um, and then the stakes change, the risk changes. Now, I don't want to be reckless. I'm not, I wasn't raised to be reckless. But what I'm, what I'm saying is that, the, that then when you're not welcome at a table, rather than the enemy whispering in you, whispering in your ear, telling you that you're like the journey is done, that you're, that it's stopped, it's over, then you know the devil's a liar because the Lord will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies, you know, uh, because you know whose you are, you know, to whom you belong, that he is your stronger covenant partner who stills the wind and the waves, who um, went ahead on your behalf, where um, all of those all of those pieces have have been a, a huge that helps the mindset. So when I'm when I'm nervous or when I'm insecure, I have to ask myself, have I forgotten whose I am, who I belong to? What's my testimony? Again, and the thankfulness comes back into that for me. And then have I forgotten who I am, what God has placed in my hands to do and what he's gifted me to do? And um, we know that struggle is part of the journey. We just know who's um, doing the fighting for you. And, and who's going ahead of you. So I think, and it has been a discipline. It really has, because sometimes you walk in and you're like, Lord, I know that I'm yours, but everybody around here would like me elsewhere. <laughs> would like me in another situation. So I would like you to physically turn up <laughs> or something, strike something down and make me feel better. So it has been a discipline to keep reminding myself and to keep on stepping out courageously and remembering, I think, you know, one of the other mindsets has been remembering that courage doesn't always feel courageous. It doesn't always feel it. It's an active thing. Yeah. Those things have helped a lot. Wow. So know who you are and who yeah. you are to. And that births confidence in you. Yeah, because that's your foundation. That's your foundation. Imagine if you, all the things that we were called to, all the things, the dreams and the thing, all the all the challenges that our families faced, you did from the perspective you were already loved by God. He not even just loved, already approved of, already proud of you. You had already done enough. You were already a plus. You were already a doctor or a lawyer, you know, or an engineer. You'd already done it. That's the that's the baseline with us and, and the Lord God. because mm -hmm. he, he made you that way he he gave you those gifts he gave you that identity it was not a mistake in his mind it was a delight okay awesome so i hope you guys are sending your questions in mm -hmm. uh, there was a question that just popped up what role has community relationships placed in your ability to lead unstoppably <laughs> I think it's, I think it is like almost your secret weapon on one level, um, having healthy, now when 
healthy relationships, not toxic ones where someone's weird with you and jealous. That's not helpful. But healthy relationships where people love you enough to cheer you on and love you enough to tell you about yourself um, and to challenge you. It, you know, the people who strengthen your hand in God um, and having having safe places. Now, we not everybody is that for everyone, but you need some, some who you can pray with, some whom you can say today is a bad day. Someone who can remind you of when you've forgotten whose you are, they can say, come on, remember whose you are. And uh, th- and they're in your corner. I think that's a huge part for us. Yeah, community is very important. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember one of the coaching sessions that I was part of, you know, you mentioned um, the fact that you must have your close knit circle. Yeah. You know, people... I think it was one of the um, one of the speakers. Uh, people you have actually invested yeah. in, you've made deposits in those relationships, yeah. so that when it's time to withdraw. Yes. Um, so can you can you can you share about building those relationships? Because many of the women sometimes I know I struggled with mm-hmm. trying to find um, like close knit friends. You know, you you especially when you start building a family and you're so yeah. much into your world. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you lose like old relationships. Yeah. And, you know, how do you like intentionally? Mm. Yeah. And I think this is a hard one. I, I'm really glad you raised that question because it is, I think it is difficult. When we were at school, you don't, you know, someone just put you in a classroom. That was it. That's how you met your friend. You thought there was anything else, but your parents enrolled you. That's how it happened. Um, now I have a practice where every year I pray about who to invest in. You know, there's a bit in the scriptures where you see that Jesus prayed all night and then came down and chose the 12 to be with him and to preach, not just for the task, but also the relationship. So I've I've made it a prayer priority now to say, okay, God, who are the people I need to spend more time with? Who are the um, people I can um, reach out to? And I just obey. I try to obey. (laughs) If if a name comes to my mind, then I'll, I'll invest in it. And I reach out to people now. Um. I try. The, the, the thing is, with, with things like relationships, yeah. you need some kind of predictable pattern. Mm-hmm. You need so many. And, and honestly, on all the questions we've, uh, we, that have been wonderfully shared tonight, so many of our battles are won and lost on our rhythm. How regularly? It's that person who's just hitting that wall until it falls down. So you can have one. It's not enough to have one deep and meaningful conversation with that person. You keep on coming. You keep on like check in once a month, check in every quarter, check in once a week, because it's that rhythm that actually gets it moving. Um, And and it's that predict uh, predictable check in. And and there's a lot we can't do right now. There's a lot we can't do. But Marco Polo still exists. Voxer still exists. WhatsApp still exists. We use those things to cultivate relationships. And, and I'll tell you the other thing we can do is shift our expectations so that we we give ourselves a goal of developing it over a year not over a month because we're busy. So it's not like a, a microwave. Process. No, <laughs> no, no. Relationships have to be built over time. And I, you know, one thing I picked up was intentionality. Yeah. You have to be intentional about it. You have to take the initiative. Yeah. Many people are waiting to be sought out. Yeah. You know, they're waiting for someone to come be their friend, but really? This isn't Disney. Yeah, this ain't Disney. We're not waiting to be rescued here, you know. And and (laughs) when you think about it, we when you think of the impact, I'm sure every person here can think of somebody who has fundamentally impacted their life for good. Someone who's brought something great. But we can also think of those people who have not been the most helpful. This is this is significant. You know, some of the, some of the ways, some of the choices I made, even in my work and my calling, were the encouragements of friends of 20 years ago, because those people were in my life. Those were relationships worth developing. So it it, it doesn't often happen spontaneously and just kind of out of thin air. It takes work and intention. But the, again, the 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 fruit is worth the fight. Wow. And I'm seeing that where. Almost running out of time here, but I was wondering if there are any other questions um, that our audience has online. Just go ahead and type that in. Um, but, you know, also drawing from that unstoppable journey that you had, I know that you changed locations, mm-hmm. right? Um, you had been 
in one type of culture. Yeah. Um, different, very different culture. You actually, I mean, you're Nigerian, so that's mm -hmm. one culture. Mm -hmm. You grew up in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> that's a different culture. <laughs> and you live in the US. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to just, I guess, pivot or, you know, adapt yeah. and thrive in all those different kind of cultures? Mm. Um, it has been strange and hard. <laughs> it has been, as, as I'm sure many of you would attest to. Um, I think there has been three pieces, again, that intimate relationship with God of reminding myself that I am his and not hiding. I, I've never done well when I've hidden a piece of me. When I, it's not like I'm going to hide that I'm Nigerian. It, people work it out in the end, you know, and, and until I was married, it was evident in my name anyway. Um, What's your name? Oh, yeah, Nero. Oh, yeah, Nero. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I know, I miss it. I miss it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I, I, what, the, the twists have been, I guess part of it has been, Lord, how will you take these changes that I didn't expect and make them your superpowers? Do you know what I mean? How will you, how will, how will, how will I bring the ways that you've wired me, the threads of my story for your glory in this other place? You know, I think that's what we have as we it's it can be. It, I mean, it is lonely. Um, it is. It is. There are lots of things to get used to. And and like you say, ad adaptations. But I think what has been consistent has has been one, that intimacy with God and the, what you said, actually, about weakness. That God's power um, is made perfect in our weakness. I've seen a translation, which is God's power comes into its own. It, it's like it's like tag. God takes over in our weakness. So that's been an important thing. Having healthy relationships with people has been another piece and keeping my eye on his mission. Because if if I'm going to leave my people behind, we're going to get things done here. Do you know what I mean? I didn't leave them. I didn't leave my home. I didn't leave my family. I didn't leave my world just to play. I, it was a calling. It was ascending. And so let's get what he, what he came for. I think it's probably made me a little bit more intense. <laughs> <laughs> it's maybe a little bit more intense about his goals yeah. um, because it was because it was costly because it is costly. It, is. it continues to be costly. Um, and so I think with those and the pivots do get tiring. So I just had to make a priority of rest and restoration and renewal and remembering the remembering that he he will renew me as well. OK, so a very, very last question. <laughs> for today, what are practical ways to get out of your own way and overcome your doubts mm -hmm. that you're not gonna mess things up mm -hmm. when opportunities that yeah. you think are bigger yeah. than you are brought to you? Wow, that's yeah. a mouthful. No, but it's a good, it's a powerful question because I think you just described my twenties. That was, uh, do you know what I mean? In terms of you stand in your own way. I remember when I was in my, I got married at 29 which actually isn't that isn't late but but amongst my friendship group amongst my friendship group it was i was the last and i remember thinking god where are you and i would begin to pull back from him um and i would get in my own way i would i would get in my own way and the ways i stopped getting in my own way is i would stop questioning myself i i had this imposter syndrome are you good enough May, you know, what's wrong with you? Who do you think you are? Why should you be here? And I sometimes, I honestly, I had to just ignore myself and not take myself that seriously. Yeah. Sometimes, not every thought in your head came from you. Ooh, like not that. every thought in your head. Some some thoughts you just need to let keep traveling out the other ear. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and sometimes you need to, and you need to ask yourself, why are you in your own way? Are you in your own way because of there are things you're hiding in your soul? Are there broken pieces in your story? In which case get the healing that you need. So some of it for my journey was therapy. It was. Because, and I realized I, I would rather have one awkward, painful year sharing all my junk than need it for 20. Get out of your own way. Yeah. So get out, do, do what it takes. If it means ignoring yourself, if it means getting therapy, if it means you need skills. And there is lots that we don't know what to do yet. But sometimes we put a full stop. We put a period um, I don't know what to do. And we say, stop rather than I don't know what to do. Lord, lead me. 
You put a comma there instead. You let it allow you to be curious and say, God, how are you going to do this? Because I can't. But, and, and rather than let the enemy keep on telling us, it's like we, we start at a journey. We feel overwhelmed. We bring all our weaknesses and the enemy just escorts us into the corner. He doesn't even have to tempt us later because he stopped us from starting. So, so you have to, fizz, sometimes you have to say, you know what? I'm saying yes this year to all the opportunities, even though they feel bigger than me. And then you go back to the commitment you made in the light so that the one in the dark doesn't overwhelm you. Those, those are some, that's what I've, honestly, that's what I've had to do when it's like, you know what? I committed to making friends this year. I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to get hurt. I'm going to, I'm going to get dead ends. But that first word is the word that carries me through to the end of the year. Because wow. I've had, I've had to do that because I will self-sabotage my life if I don't do that. I will self-sabotage it. I will go, the temptations will come. The fears will come. The tiredness will come. And I'll just ignore it. So I need to make those commitments. And then I need to have someone I've told about that commitment who can keep on saying, so how's that commitment going? And they can say mid-course adjustment or they can say, come on, let's let, or they run with you. I, it's, I, I, I'm really grateful for that question because I think this is one of the things that we do. We, we can get in our way. And meanwhile, the Lord, remember the Lord knew. The Lord knew how he wired you. The Lord was not shocked when he made you, was not shocked when he gifted you. So when he gave you those opportunities, they were for you to grow into. Wow. Okay. <laughs> One last question and we will be done for today. One last question. Mm -hmm. So what is one thing that you would tell your old self that you wish you knew about living as an unstoppable woman? Mm -hmm. What would you tell your younger self or you know old self I'm not sure what old self means mm -hmm. but i think um when i think of that question i think of and i think of the old self i think of myself every time before i'm about to step into something new and in that moment there is fear there is there is worry there's often um second guessing and what I would say is you never feel more alive than when you are living into the way God wired you. You, you never feel more alive. But, and, and, and say, yeah, you will pay a price. You'll say things and people will counsel you on social media. You will do things and people won't understand. You will. Yeah, of course, there will be rejection. Yeah. But oh, my gosh, what God does on the other side, you won't even remember half of that stuff. It won't define you. It will, it will sting because we're human beings, but it will not define you. So I think every time, I, when I think of that old self, I say, don't stop now. Don't stop now because it is God is worth it. And the redemption where he restores the years, the years, the decades that the locusts have eaten. Mm -mm. Go for redemption. I don't, you know, sometimes we, we live with survival when actually, and survival is wonderful to all of you who survived. I'm just telling you that there is also wholeness and redemption to keep going after. Go for redemption. Wow. Joe, I love you. We love you. Thank you. It's such an honor yeah. to be with you. Thank you for when the this pandemic is over. I might as well just take a trip to Minnesota. There you go. Here. There you go. Road trip. <laughs> I am going to find wherever you are, the conferences that you're going to be at. Um, it will be lovely to actually meet you in person. But thank you for spending so much of your busy, busy, busy schedule with us today. You've dropped so many nuggets that we have to go back and listen and listen and okay. listen and listen. You know, for those writing notes, their notes are full uh, <laughs> because God has graced you with so much practical wisdom that we can use in our daily living. And we just pray that out of all the deposits and everything you've shared today, that God will multiply it back to you and he will replenish you oh, in you. Jesus' name. Amen, I receive it. Amen. So um, it's been a pleasure with you, having you. Um, so I am going to be looking forward to uh, subsequent coaching sessions with you. Yeah, um, come on. Yeah, I'll see you next Tuesday. So thank you again. Thank you again, Joe, for joining us today. It's been thank a real treat. Amazing, amazing. Wasn't that just a powerful session with Joe Saxton?
an unstoppable woman. It's been amazing. I want to invite the host to, um, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about this session. Unstoppable focus. Unstoppable wisdom. Yes. Unstoppable, just, you know, unstoppable struggle. Unstoppable vision. Unstoppable Even vision. when you're trying to stop yourself, yeah. the vision, when it is in God, is unstoppable. And I think that was one of the best parts about the session is just her rawness, her yes. transparency, her honesty, that you cannot stop the vision, even when the vision is trying to stop itself. You know, another thing I enjoyed was when you go talk to God, go raw, mm -hmm. go honest. Because he already knows. He already knows. <laughs> you, can, you can fool him. So just come as you are. Come authentic. Come genuine. And you will just be amazed on how God can get into the details. And thank you, virtual <laughs> community. We see you. We see you thanking Joe Saxton. Yes, So thank I see you. thanks coming in from the virtual community. We're also getting comments saying unstoppable health, unstoppable finances. I see unstoppable vision, unstoppable focus. Yes. Just unstoppable all around. We thank you, Miss Joe Saxton. It's been such a wonderful time. Yes. Now, I think we will have our vendor showcase. Yes. So stay tuned for more ways to su stop, support these wonderful, unstoppable women. So now we're going into another segment. Let's take a seat. Yes, please. The second to last segment, and I think it's the most important, Ms. Jo Saxon talked about how Thanksgiving is a weapon. Yes. And a way to give thanks, a way to show appreciation and support causes and events such as these is to offer up your offerings. Yes. And we have awesome ways that you can give and continue to support women, our conferences, and our mission to connect women so that they can reach their full potential power in their homes and in their communities. Doesn't that sound awesome? Yes, it does. It does. So let's talk about the different ways that you can give. So we are on all of the platforms, so there could be no <laughs> excuse for supporting <laughs> us. We are on Venmo, and you can give at CT Light I Shine. That's capital C, T, light, I shine. And there are other ways to give. It should be on your screen. Yes. Um, another way, is, of course, is our cash app. Mm -hmm. um, we also use Zelle. So you do see the information on your screen. So we do ask for you to give yes. and um, provide Thanksgiving. <laughs> right. um, and, you know, it will be very much appreciated. 
but um, ways to give is always ways to show a, a, a little snapshot of your heart. So that's what I always think is your wallet is your heart. Right. And as you give, you gain. It's the yes. law of input, output. As you receive, you should give out. And as you're giving out, you also receive. So there's no loss in the kingdom, right? Exactly. Praise God. Exactly. What an awesome time. You know, it was a wonderful event. You know, we started off kind of giving a definition of what unstoppable meant. Yes. Us. So, you know, after the event, um, you know, I kind of said that, you know, what the definition was is that, you know, nothing can stop God. And Amen. this and this virtual I Shine event proved that for me. Absolutely. Yes, it did. So I really enjoyed the event. I hope the audience enjoyed the event. Um, don't forget, you can continue to drop your unstoppable stories, yes. unstoppable um, hashtag. Give us your comments right now of some of the things that you were taking away from today's event. But speaking of unstoppable stories, mm -hmm. we have an announcement to make. Okay. Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> we sure you know, do. We do have some unstoppable stories that came on our um, website. And we do want to acknowledge and provide a gift. I believe it's a gift card. For our winner. Yes. Oh, what is our winner? So our that. winner is named Nakia Young. Okay. And she gets her first prize as an Amazon gift card that will be delivered to her um, directly. Okay. Which is awesome because she shared her unstoppable woman story. Amen. And a part of her story, I don't know if you know, but she was actually cyber attacked twice in one week. Despite these attacks, she remains unstoppable, and you can get more information about what she does as a certified life coach at nikeayoung.com. That's N-I-K-E-A-Y-O-U-N-G.com. Congratulations. We're seeing some congratulations from the community. Congratulations, Everyone put your hands together for Miss Young. Yay. Thank you for those who did participate and shared their unstoppable stories. Yes, yes. That gives me to another point. Through the struggle, how can you be unstoppable? Right. I want you to remind them of our goodies on our website. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good segue. You know, on our website, you know, through the struggle, and we're going to, um, I believe it's Connect. Yes. And we have a list of women's small groups that you can be a part of. Mm -hmm. Because one thing we want to say is that you do not have to go through it alone. And you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't have to go through it alone. So if you go on our website, we have plenty of small groups. Yes. That way you can connect. Mm -hmm. um, you can also find ways, you know, we, we were asking questions, how could you focus on God through the storm? Mm -hmm. You know, one of my unstoppable stories is my small group. Because being in a small group, you just open up. You get to get healed. Yes. You get to, um, you know, gain sisters. Share you get your burden. To, yes, and it's a free zone, you know, and it's just a lovely place that you can connect. So we encourage you to go to the website. Yes. Click connect. Mm -hmm. Review all the small groups. Join a small group. And I'm going to give out a shout out to every last woman here at City Lights. Yes. All women should be a part of a small group. So you should always join a small group because, you know, it will create an unstoppable story for yeah, you. Yeah, just plug into a virtual community because the conference does not end tomorrow. And remember, there's a resource tab where you can journal, map out a plan for what you want to leave this conference taking. And finally, we are your community now. You are stuck with us. Yes. Submit a prayer under the prayer tab. Correct. How can we serve you? How can we pray with you? We are so ready, willing, and able to lift you up in prayer. We're so happy that we have yes. this family join us. Aren't yes. you happy that they joined uh, us today? Know, thank you so Everyone, much. Everyone, wherever you are, give a round of applause for yourself. Yes. A round of applause for God. Yes. Maya and I believe that he is doing unstoppable things in your life. And we want to remind you about tomorrow. Yes, day two. Well, first of all, let's just give a shout out to day one. Day one, day one yes. was, well, it was unstoppable. You know, we had some challenges, but. We stayed calm in the storm. Yes, we can't, we stayed calm in the storm. Uh, we were able to, we hope we were able to um, inspire and just to bring out the unstoppable plans that God has for you in your life. So we really, really hope that that 
accomplish, our goal was accomplished with that. So we do have day two tomorrow, and it starts at? 12.30, I believe. 1 o'clock. 12.30 is when the preludes start, so yes. check out the preludes. It has a lot of QR codes where you can take out your phone, scan your screen, and it leads you to a bunch of our goodies and our links and our photo booths. So check out the, Q, the preludes at 12.30. The conference starts at 1 o'clock. Yes. So I hope to see you back here tomorrow unstoppable, revved yes. up, excited. Yes, and we have some real good speakers for tomorrow. We sure do. Um, our very own First Lady, Pastor Debo. Yay. We have Katie, Katie Preacher. Yes, we do. So we do have some wonderful things in plan for you. So we do want you to come back for day two. Yes. Take your selfies, use the iShine20 hashtag, and we will see you tomorrow. God bless you. Be unstoppable today. Bye. Bye. <laughs>